Alan, what sort of opinions about Carol Chessman and the Carol Chessman case did you carry into this from the very beginning? That's an interesting question. I, um, when I went into it, I thought that he was probably guilty um, of the, the crimes he was accused of or, and sentenced for, as a matter of fact. And those crimes were? Uh, rape and kidnap. Uh, however, it was a very technical form of kidnap. He, he, he uh, transported uh, um, a woman about 25 feet in her car, uh, um, just drove the car 25 feet away from uh, where they were. And there, there was, at that time in California, a law called the Little Lindbergh Law, um, which was in response to the Lindbergh, was brought into being in response to the Lindbergh kin kidnapping. And, and it, it, what he did technically qualified as kidnap, which was a capital offense. The rape was not a capital offense. I thought he was probably guilty of, of, uh, of those crimes, although I didn't think that he got a fair trial. Now I'm not so sure that uh, he was guilty. But that really is immaterial because the, the, the movie, which is a very, um, very accurate portrayal of his life, uh, the 12 years from the time he was uh, captured until he was executed, uh, is, uh, is direct from the transcripts of, uh, of everything that uh, legal that took place. The, the interesting thing about his life in that period was that he simply didn't get justice. Uh, and and the, the transcripts of the trial show that. So it doesn't matter so much whether he was guilty as would any one of us want to have a trial that unfair? Why do you think it was so unfair? Because he was a kid from the streets, he was a product of the of the prison system. He uh, he was a very arrogant person. He had a, had a very arrogant personality, uh, a very abrasive guy. In the beginning, he mellowed as the years went on, which is the case with uh, most uh, criminals. I understand from uh, from uh, penal authorities, uh, they say if uh, if you don't kill criminals uh, when they commit violent crimes, if you just wait until they're about forty, they tend to. Uh, become less violent, so you don't really need to kill them. And that's in, in many cases, it's not, it's not in, in all cases. But he, he probably, to answer your question, he probably was, was uh, convicted because, and probably got an unfair trial because he was so arrogant and because they just didn't think that a person who had been in prison since he was 16 really deserved that much attention and respect. And, and he didn't get it. What was it about his early life, Alan, that you think brought him to a life of crime? It's hard to say. He came from a poor family. That might have had something to do with it. Uh, he, he says in one of his books that he started stealing milk to, to help feed the family at, at an early age, like around eight years old. Uh, he also had encephalitis when he was about four, and there's, there was probably some serious brain damage that, uh, that occurred then, uh, which, uh, which had an effect on his personality. It did not affect his intelligence, apparently, because he seems to have been a, a near genius. Uh, uh, he had an IQ of about 140 and taught himself with no basic education, taught himself uh, once he was in prison to be an expert in, in law. He kept himself alive by virtue of uh, his ability in the law. Mm -hmm. So he, he had a very interesting life uh, going from from petty criminal and armed robber to uh, being a world figure. He, he wrote uh, a number of best-selling best books, uh, financed his, uh, his uh, uh, legal campaign to stay alive with, uh, with the hundreds of thousands of dollars that he made uh, from the books he wrote. He was a very interesting man. Alan, I would disappoint everybody if I didn't ask you at least one thing about MASH. Sure. Any, any surprises for us this year? Yes, there's a new character coming on the show uh, called Charles Emerson Winchester, who is a rich <laughs> doctor from Boston, uh, who is uh, replacing Frank Burns. Larry Linville, who played Frank Burns, has, uh, has left the show after five years. He wanted to move on to other things. And uh, the new character is played by a wonderful actor called David Ogden Stiers, and he is really delicious. He's a, he's a wonderful, uh, he's a whole new character who... Uh, um, uh, we're really enjoying finding out about him as, the, as, the, as we shoot the, uh, the first few episodes and find out exactly who this guy is. He's a, it's a good character. It's going to be fun. Hawkeye, take a dim view of this rich guy. Uh, yes, not, not because he's rich, but because he, uh, he's so aware of how rich he is. You know, he's, uh, he has his, uh, monogrammed handkerchiefs and uh, monogrammed caviar. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's, he really doesn't think he ought to be there. It's, uh, it's far beneath him, and he spends some time in the corner of his tent cooking crepes and things so he can make life a little easier for himself. 
Alan, thanks for all the pleasure you bring us on TV, and thanks for talking with us today well, here in Hollywood. That's kind of you. Thank you.